Okay, now I'm gonna hold my breath to 30 seconds. Starting now. <laughs> I'm feeling <coughs> pretty sick right now because I was running out of oxygen in that exercise. Every living thing in the world needs oxygen to survive. So if you run out of oxygen, you will eventually die because the cells making you up will stop metabolizing, which means that they will stop making the nutrients and the energy that's used to keep you alive. Well, imagine that you're stuck in the middle of a bathroom stall with 10 other people in it. They are squeezing you in the center. And that's pretty terrible because people on the outside, they would be able to breathe, but you in the center, you can't breathe because all the other people are soaking up all the oxygen there is outside of the stall. So it's impossible for any oxygen to reach you. So you'll eventually die. Well, this is actually happening to cells during tissue engineering. So during 3D bioprinting, where you're actually 3D printing tissue scaffolds, the cells in the middle region of the scaffold don't get as much nutrients as the cells on the edge portion. And right now, it takes over hours and even days to print out an adult-sized tissue scaffold. And this means that the cells in the middle region are deprived of essential nutrients for this long amount of time, and that means they will die out soon. This is actually a huge problem right now in tissue engineering, and scientists are looking for ways to solve this. And here comes their savior, algae. Hey guys, it's Yuli, and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about an idea that I had for using algae to keep mammalian cells alive during tissue engineering. Let's dive right into it. To give you a quick summary of this idea, I'm essentially suspending unicellular algae into a bath of brinular hydrogel where print material is deposited into during 3D bioprinting. Bioprinting is essentially extruding out a material called biolinks, which are a mixture of living cells and hydrogels, into the 3D model of a tissue that is later bound to develop into real tissue. And bioprinting is actually a part of a larger process called tissue engineering, where you're essentially developing new tissues to mimic the biological function of actual organs inside your body. A bioprinting technique that's getting a lot of attention right now, it's called FRESH, or the Freeform Reversible Embedding of Suspended Hydrogels. Essentially, bioink is deposited into a bath of high support material made out of microscale hydrogel particles, and we call this bath a support bath. This support bath locks around the deposited bioink and holds its shape until it cures. And this is the key to how fresh bioprinting allows you to print quickly and with high resolution. It, however, also allows you to take control over the extracellular environment that the cells inside the bioink are exposed to once they're deposited. And this made me wonder, what if we could provide oxygen to these cells through the support bath? Turns out I wasn't the only one who thought of this idea. Researchers have already tried to do this by releasing particles or molecules that can really release oxygen into the support bath. But the problem is a lot of people use something called peroxides, which are molecules that produce water molecules and oxygen. And peroxides produce oxygen for only a short amount of time and often involve chemical reactions that are toxic to these cells. Then I encountered this paper by a Harvard research team where they embedded algae into a, into a tissue scaffold to provide oxygen to the mammalian cells in the scaffold. And the algae were later degraded away. And this got me thinking, what if I could use algae to provide oxygen to the cells in the support bath? At this point, I was curious if other similar things had been done. So I started researching about how algae was co-cultured with mammalian cells and previous research to provide oxygen. And this opened a whole another world to me. To give you a brief discussion of the wonders that I found during this research, researchers used algae to treat chronic wounds in mice, to treat breast cancer in mice, 
to make neurons start firing again in tadpole brains, as well as growing thicker meat tissues and making this algae tadpole chimera that apparently survived for several days. And you're hearing me right. This stuff is crazy. Fast forward to now. I talked to experts about this idea who apparently found it was interesting and encouraged me to try it out and developed a proposal for an experiment that I want to conduct to see if my idea actually works. So my hypothesis is that if I suspend living algae in a bi-printing support bath, it would provide a continuous and non-toxic oxygen supply for the living cells inside the biowink and therefore allow more cells to survive the bioprinting process. For this experiment, I'll be using a type of algae called C. reinhardti. C. reinhardti were a really good candidate for this experiment because they are small enough to remain suspended in the fresh support bath, they're proliferating rapidly, meaning they're easy to use, they're harmless to the mammalian cells, and lastly, were extensively studied and applied for the cold culture applications with mammalian cells. This C. reinhardti algae would be suspended in a support bath consisting of the granular hydrogel and a liquid phase. The granular hydrogel would be made from a material called sodium alginate. Alginate is a hydrogel derived from brown algae, meaning that it's going to be really compatible with the algae that I'll be using. The alginate is also physically stable, can be degraded by an enzyme, and it's transparent, meaning that it's going to let light from outside the support bath to pass through the whole entire support bath, reaching every single algae cell suspended in the bath. The support bath also contains a component called the liquid phase. The liquid phase is a liquid material that fills the individual gaps between the granular hydrogenal particles. And for our case, this liquid phase would be made by a mixture of TAP and DMEM, which are each the culture media used for culturing the algae and the mammalian cells to keep the algae and the mammalian cells in the scaffold alive. The biowing that will be extruded into the support bath would contain a cell line called C2C12 cells. So essentially, these cells are the precursor for the skeletal muscle cells in mice. So C2C12 cells have previously been co-cultured with the C. reinhardti algae that I'm using right now, and it also proliferates rapidly, making them a really great option for a proof-of-concept experiment like this one. Also, because a cell is a muscle cell, the oxygen concentration around this environment would be a crucial factor for its survival during bioprinting. To form the biowink, these C2C12 cells would be mixed with a hydrogel called gelma. I chose gelma because it has been used with C. reinhardti algae before, and it also is transparent. During this experiment, this biowink would be extruded into a lattice structure made out of two milliliters of this biowink. The lattice structure was chosen because it has a lot of surface area, meaning that it would be widely interfacing with the support bath and the algae throughout the bioprinting process. After the bioprinting process has been completed, the support material and the algae would have to be removed by liquefying them. And this would happen when I incubate the tank of support material at the body temperature along with a solution of an enzyme called cellulase. Cellulase is an enzyme that degrades the structure of cellulose, which makes up the cell wall of the algae and therefore makes the algae pop. It also disrupts the polymer structure of the alginate hydrogel particles, making the, making the support bath liquefied. Finally, after the degradation, the pertinent lattice structure would be removed from the liquid by support bath, and the oxygen concentration and cell survivability throughout this lattice scaffold would be measured. And these two data sets would be compared to see how the oxygen derived from the algae would have impacted the survivability of the mammalian cells. This idea, once tested, would completely transform how we think about managing conditions that cells are exposed to during tissue engineering. For example, the, this co-culture system and 3D bioprinting could be transferred to other parts of tissue engineering, like cultivating mammalian cells before they're mixed into the biowink, or even culturing the printed tissue scaffold to create an actual living tissue. 
And during this cold culture, the algae would not only provide oxygen to the mammalian cells, but also remove their cellular waste like ammonia and lactate that once accumulated could be really harmful to the mammalian cells themselves. Further, the algae could be genetically engineered to produce certain molecules like growth factors to enhance the overall performance of the final tissue. Hey, if you'd like to learn more about the step-by-step -step procedure of this experiment, feel free to check this article out. And please contact me if you know of a lab where I can actually test this idea out over the summer next year. Either way, I hope you learned something from this video and see you in my next one. Bye!